everyone. Welcome to this video on population and sample by Simply Learn. In this video, we will introduce you to the concept of population and sample along with some real world examples of where they should be used. So let's get started. So what can you expect from this video? What's in it for you? First, we will answer the question, what is population? Then, we will explain the meaning of samples to you. We will look at some differences between population and samples by looking at some common examples, followed by looking at how we can collect data from a population and from a sample. So what is a population? In statistics, population is the entire set of items from which data is drawn for a statistical study. It can be a group of individuals, a set of items, etc. It constitutes the data pool for a study. In general, a population is the entire group that you want to draw conclusions about. Usually, when we talk about population, you think about the people living in an area at a time. But in research, a population doesn't always refer to people. It can mean a group containing elements of anything you want to study, such as objects, events, organizations, countries, species, organisms, etc. For example, all undergraduate students in the Netherlands. Or say you would like to know whether there is an association between job performance and the amount of home working hours per week in the specific case of Belgian data scientists. In this case, the population may be Belgian data scientists. However, if the scope of the study is more narrow, then the population will be more specific and include only workers who meet that certain criteria. The point is that the population should only include people to whom the results will apply. Since in this case and many others, it is impossible to observe the entire statistical population due to time constraints, constraints on geographical accessibility and constraints on the researcher's resources, a researcher would instead absorb the statistical sample from the population in order to attempt to learn something about the population as a whole. This brings us to the topic, what is a sample? A sample represents the group of interests from the population which we will use to represent our data. The sample is an unbiased set of the population which best represents the whole data. A sample consists of some observations drawn from the population. So a part or a subset of the population. The sample is a group of elements who actually participated in the study. The size of the sample is always less than the total size of the population. Typically, the population is very large, making a census or a complete enumeration of all values in the population impractical or impossible. The sample represents a subset of manageable size. Samples are collected and statistics are calculated from the sample so that one can make interferences or extrapolations from the sample to the population. This process of collecting information from a sample is referred to as sampling. Say you are testing the effects of a new fertilizer on crop yield. All the crop fields represent your population, whereas the 10 crop fields you tested correspond to your sample. Now let's look at the differences between population and samples with the help of some examples. The first example would be that all students in a class would constitute the population of that class. A sample would be only the top 10 students within the same class. The sample is a small subset of the population in this case. Advertisements for IT jobs in India would mean the complete search results that pops up when you search IT jobs in India. A sample of that would be the top 50 advertisements for the same jobs. Another example is all countries of the world. This represents a population of all the countries. A sample would be countries with published data on birth rates and GDP since 2000s. Next, let's look at how to collect data from a population. Data from a population is collected when your research question needs a large amount of data or information about every member of the population is available. 
Populations are used when your research question requires or when you have access to data from every member of the population. Usually, it's only straightforward to collect data from a whole population when it is small, accessible and cooperative. Population data is used when the data pool is small and cooperative to giving all of the required data. For larger populations, we can use sampling to represent part of the population it is hard to collect data from. For example, a high school administrator wants to analyze the final exam scores of all graduating seniors to see if there is a trend. Since they are only interested in applying the findings to the graduating seniors in this high school, they can use the whole population data set. For larger and more dispersed populations, it is often difficult or impossible to collect data from every individual. For example, every 10 years, the federal US government aims to count every person living in the country using the US census. This data is used to distribute funding across the nation. However, historically, marginalized and low-income groups have been difficult to contact, locate and encourage participation from. Because of non-responses, the population count is incomplete and biased towards some groups which results in disproportionate fundings across the country. In cases like this, sampling can be used to make more precise interferences about the population. And for that, we can collect data from a sample. How do we go about collecting data from a sample? Samples are used when the population is large in size, scattered or it's generally hard to collect data on individual instances within it. We can use a small sample of the population to make overall hypotheses. When your population is too large in size, geographically dispersed or difficult to contact, it is necessary to use a sample. With statistical analysis, you can use sample data to make estimates or test hypotheses about population data. For example, you want to study political attitudes in young people. Your population is the 3000 undergrads in the Netherlands. Because this is not practical to collect data from all of them, you use a sample of 300 undergraduate volunteers from three Dutch universities. This is the group who will complete your online study. Ideally, a sample should be randomly selected and representative of the population. Using probability sampling methods, such as simple random sampling or stratified sampling reduces the risk of sampling bias and enhances both internal and external validity. And with that, we come to the end of a population and sample video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to like, subscribe and share this video. And do click on the bell icon to get notifications every time Simply Learn releases a new video. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and keep learning. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.